fur of the book, they got an image. Um, and it tells you that there's a record in the Library of Congress, and there's a record in the DNB, and there's a record in the Dutch libraries, all for this book, all for me. And it tells you other information too, like who the two co-authors are, right? So this is the kind of thing that we're talking about, these records that libraries have spent a long time, many, many centuries, um, coming up with and producing. And there are also authority files for things like titles and subjects, um, but name authority files are sort of the best known instance of this. So that's the traditional background. What this panel is going to explore is the relationship that Wikidata and Wikimedia projects have with these authority files, um, and what it means when the world's largest source of information, that's us, starts interacting with these massive curated um, systems of metadata that libraries have put together for a very long time. And what does that mean for us? What happens if Wikimedia projects become ad hoc authority files or even formal authority files? And how can we use this data that exists in the world um, to help make Wikipedia and Wikidata and our other projects more accurate and more authoritative? So this panel is made up of librarians, Wikipedians, and Wikipedian librarians <laughs> um, who will explore various applications of using existing authority control files on Wikimedia projects and um, some other things as well. And importantly, how Wikimedians can participate. So I'll introduce our panel briefly, and then we will move on to the presentations. First up, Max Klein is the Wikipedian in residence for OCLC, which is the Online Computer Library Center. It's an international library network. Um, he entered the Wikiverse from teaching with Wikipedia and the education program, and has moved on to doing technical work with OCLC. Um, and he seeks to marry these two society, information societies together. Let's see, David Palmer is next. David Palmer is an associate university librarian for digital strategies and technical services and the principal investigator for the HKU Scholars Hub at the University of Hong Kong here in town. Um, he's been there for 23 years and he's developed and managed their institutional repository and worked on access and all the other issues that come with that. He was a founding member of the Hong Kong Open Access Committee and was instrumental in having HKU become a signatory to the Berlin De Declaration on Open Access in November 2009. Um, he's led lots of other groundbreaking projects over the years. Uh, Matthias Schindler, next to him, is a German Wikipedian um, he's been a Wikipedian since 2003, and he helped found the German chapter in 2004. He was on their board for several years, um, and then he went to work for the National Library of Germany, and was there, and he's worked on several projects with the library, and then now he's back at the German chapter, Wikimedia Deutschland, as a staff member, as a project manager. Um, and he's created a hack for websites to declare which, uh, entities, which GND identified entities existed at a website. He's going to talk about that. And then lastly, Andrew Gray is a UK librarian. Um, he started working with Wikipedia um, while doing his degree back in 2004, um, which is also when I went to library school and started with Wikipedia. And look at us now. <laughs> Um, he's worked for various educational institutions. He was the Wikipedian in residence at the British Library in 2012-13, um, where he worked on the authority control project that Max worked on as well, um, and is currently the librarian for the British Antarctic Survey, which I've always thought was really cool. Um, so each of our panelists are going to talk for a few minutes. We're going to try and leave lots of time for questions, and I hope that this is kind of a wide-ranging discussion about issues around librarianship and bringing in, bringing in data, so we definitely welcome your ideas and questions. Um, but uh, Max, do you want to come and start? Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, 
I love them. Crashing. We had everything open and set up. It was perfect. It was perfect. Sorry. Yes, everything's crashed. That's, that's <laughs> then you can just talk. Indeed. Um. Ask a few questions of the audience. How many people here are involved with libraries in some way? Librarians, work in libraries, have done library projects? Okay. How many people have um, heard of authority control before this session? Ah, oh, Wikipedians, very good. <laughs> Trust a Wikipedian to know something about authority control. Um, how many people uh, are familiar at all with the projects that are being discussed in the abstract? Okay, just a few people, so it's new to new to most people here. Um, Who questions authority? What? Who questions authority? Who questions authority? authority. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Matthias asks, who questions authority in this audience? <laughs> it's a joke, yes. <laughs> no, not everyone? Okay. Um, <laughs> Who trusts technology? <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> thanks very much. Okay. <laughs> Hurrah. Okay, so Authority Addicts, the new frontier of authority control on Wikidata. Uh, the title is supposed to be a pun both on the fact that authority has two meanings and authority control. You, uh, right now, we think of authority as like, this is the, the, the authority in that these people have the final word on the set matter. But authority control actually started from the fact that we're determining authors. Um, so even, and actually those two words are etymologically uh, connected. So they both mean the same thing originally. But we're actually really talking about authors uh, and not the fact that we're begging people to, um, to come and tell us what to do and that we love it so much. Um, as I mentioned, we're gonna, I'm going to talk heavily about the Virtual International Authority file, um, and I'll be, talk, I'll be um, calling it VF for short. Um, and as Phoebe explained earlier, it's a merged super authority file, and it, was, um, it seeks to uh, algorithmically match many different international authority, or national authority files. Um, and it first sort of started in 1998. Um, and it was a collaboration between the Library of Congress, the German National Library, the Deutsche Nationale Bibliothek, and Bibliothèque Nationale de France. And those three libraries um, were going to be, um, those three records were going to be automatically merged by OCLC, which is a very large international organization, um, and they are currently my employer as well. So that's how I got started getting involved with it. Um, although it started with those libraries, it now includes over 30 libraries, um, as exotic as the Vatican Library, and uh, most of these are national libraries, but there's also some that aren't, like the Getty Research Institute. Um, and uh, so, so it's actually merging and connecting a lot of these different ones. Phoebe already showed you what a sample record looks like. Um, I was going to show you a different one, and what's, what's interesting about Phoebe's, that the, the irony here is that Phoebe's doesn't include one very specific um, connected um, authority file, which is the test version of Wikipedia. And so you notice here that, um, Wik that Wikipedia is in fact in, in the cluster and um, of this author, uh, Rebecca Solnit, who's one of my favorite authors. Um, and so actually Wikipedia um, in, ended up in, the v in VF by some experimental um, methods that were taking uh, a lot of the structured data in English Wikipedia, like uh, person data, and treating it as an authority file and seeing what would happen. And in fact, it actually helped to um, cluster a lot of different other li library records because um, Wikipedia um, had, a lot of, um, it had a lot of additional information about each person. For instance, you can see in the section, the middle section, that, that the next section would be the alternative name forms. And here, because the Japanese National Library um, is being clustered, and the Japanese National Library has the Japanese translation, that the Japanese version of the name is included in this cluster now. Um, and beneath that, you can see some of the selected works of this person, of, of Rebecca Solnit. And you can see that uh, the Wikipedia, that actually the source there is Wikipedia in some of them. So we've actually also, VF has automatically determined some of um, her publications and, and merged it. So it now means that 
we know through Wikipedia and different other means that the person who wrote this book also has this Japanese name. So this is sort of the benefit of merging all these international authority files. Um, and as I mentioned, um, Wikipedia became an experimental import um, about a f two years ago in VIA. Now, the thing that I'm trying to, or I'd like to have your mind bend a bit around this is that Wikipedia itself can be considered an authority file because a lot of the things that authority files do, which are to disambiguate different names in one of, in, as one of the things it does, well, Wikipedia actually disambiguates different, different people and provides unique IDs for them. So if you, if you squint a little bit, if you change the way you look at it, Wikipedia is itself an authority file. Um, and if you think that Wikipedia, if you allow me to, to tell you that Wikipedia is an authority file, well, it actually means that Wikidata is a super authority file because it connects many authority files. And all those sub-authority files would be considered um, Wikipedia. So let's look at the battle of the super authority files. Um, this is a map comparing the sizes of the two. Um, VF is on the left, and it contains about 33 million entries uh, 26 million of which are about people, and the other, the rest of them are about sort of corporations or geographic names that it disambiguates. Uh, on the right is about uh, 14 million. I, I'm just using estimates here, so tell me, someone shout if I'm wrong. About 14 million items right now in Wikidata, and I was trying to figure out a good technique to determine the, the number of articles that were about people on Wikidata, and I'm just giving an upper limit here of about 4 million. Um, I don't know if you would, someone has a disagreement with that. But according to some rough estimates about the way that they merge, I'm giving about 4 million people. Um, that's a, it's a linear estimation. And oh, anyway, I have, some, I have some methods for that. Um, OK, so the, the funny part about this is that even though these two are of different sizes, um, some of these, each of these records sometimes refer to the same people. So, the question is, wh how do you determine which records in VF also match the records in Wikidata? Uh, and that, on, that, was, that has been tackled in several different ways. The Germans, uh, Wikipedia, um, quite early on, decided that they were just going to start manually writing uh, using templates of the um, different P and D, which is the, German the identifier from the German National Library, and different VF. And I believe they also did LCCN, now that I'm thinking about it. They're going to manually write those into names. And um, Tillman has told me about many times that, oh, you know, almost 10 years ago, he saw people type start first making edit parties and trying to connect all these authority files into it. Um, and then about, as I said, two years ago, when um, Wikipedia became an experimental part of VF um, using the, um, their automatic matching algorithm, about 250,000 matches were algorithmically created between English Wikipedia and VF. Uh, and then some more um, connections have been made manually in some of this, uh, but in a much smaller scale uh, on French, Italian, Spanish, Polish, and Japanese Wikipedias. But, so here's what, I, here's what I recently did, was that I merged and migrated all of the different Wikipedia's uh, authority files into Wikidata. Um, so each, each bar here represents a different measure. The very top one is any number of um, Wikidata items that have some authority control, and that's about 400,000. And then VF has about 380,000 um, entries in Wikidata. Then G and D goes to about 218,000, and ISNI and, uh, and all these different international other uh, identifiers uh, are less and less represented. But still, 400,000 is quite a large property. I think it's almost like one of the top five properties in Wikidata at the moment. Um, of course, when you merge these things, they don't always agree with one another. And so this is um, comparing the disagreements, um, just some standard disagreements that I looked at. Now, the fact is that if you look at the, if you have, compare a page in English Wikipedia that has um, a, a VFID and a page in German Wikipedia that has a VFID, it turns out about 10.5% of the time, those won't be the same identifiers and there's disagreement. Um, now, there's also a, disagree, a higher disagreement um, with German Wikipedia and VF. And of course, the worst one is English Wikipedia and VF, and that's because it was algorithmically created. So there were, there were some error rates there. All right, Max, I'm going to cut you off uh, okay. if you want to conclude so we get, have time for the other three. Yeah, panelists. so the final yeah. thing is that Wikidata 
um, provides a quality assurance. So all these disagreements are eventually can be fixed using Wikidata. And that's one of the really beneficial things and the reasons to come here is that it provides quality assurance for all of, for all of these different um, Wikidata. So both Wikidata and VF will be improved by this merging and matching. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and we will have questions, or time for questions. Um, next up is David Palmer, uh, who's going to focus, I think, on um, Chinese issues. Uh, yes. Uh, well, this is because uh, we created, at the University of Hong Kong, we created uh, an authority control system in our institutional repository. So I want to back up from that and tell you why we did that. I want to explain the, the, the problem about uh, ambiguation, disambiguation. So this screen uh, goes, uh, starts with one person and shows that he can have many names. The next one will go the opposite way. Anyway, let's begin. In Hong Kong, the final authority for who you are identity is the Hong Kong ID card. And on this card, you can have uh, a name that's written in, in Roman and a name that's written in Chinese text or Hanza. And they're need, they, it, they usually correspond <clears throat> but uh, they don't need to. They can be totally different. <clears throat> so this man, uh, Danny Wong, and there's his, his uh, Hanza name, uh, but when he publishes articles in, in journals, he will use a short academic form of abbreviations, which could be Wong WMD, Wong WM, Wong DW, and it need not be the same each time. He could just whimsically uh, change each time he did it. Uh, when he wants to travel to a different location, he might uh, pronounce his name in the, um, the, the phonological sound system of that area, so that, um, or, or even write his name that way. So if he uses Hanyu Pinyin, it becomes Huang Weiming with no hyphen. With Wei Giles in Taiwan, it would be with a hyphen. Uh, if he was in, with the Fukien people in, in Taiwan, uh, he could use uh, Huang with a W in it and on and on, there's Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese also, that, there's that problem. Uh, and then just because he, he wants to, uh, this is his preferred name that he uses, uh, uses on his checking account, Wong Danny uh, WM. So you see that uh, this one man, he can have many, many different type, uh, forms of name. And when you're trying to find out or collect all of the articles that he wrote or all the inventions that he made into one place, it's very difficult. So, okay, this is the opposite way. Um, if you uh, started with an academic name of Wong DWM, well, you know, we know that uh, it could mean many different things. For example, it could mean Wong Daniel Weiming or Wong David Wingmong. Those are both possible. If you started with the, the Hansa uh, written form of his name, uh, uh, or rather, no, if you started with the, the Roman uh, Romanization of his name, Wang Wai Ming, then it could be written in Hansa in, in uh, different ways because, of course, uh, the, 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 uh, a homograph or, or a homonym in, in English can be dis uh, transcribed in Hansa with, with several different characters. Uh, and then, of course, the, the, the other way also, uh, starting from Hansa, then, then going into to Roman, it can be described, transcribed many different ways. So that's the problem. So what's a poor librarian to do? Uh, how to bring uh, all of these names together <coughs> uh, and find out all of the achievements, publications, grants, projects, inventions, etc., for this one man and, and disambiguate from like-named people. Uh, it, so the problem is ambiguous identity, and this is not only for authors, it's also for inventors, uh, principal and co-investigators, contractors, consultants, architects, thesis advisors, and on and on and on. And it, it, it makes itself manifest in many different ways. In, in the academic uh, environment, it means that there could be lost citations. That somebody wants to give you a citation, but he uses the wrong form of the name. So Scopus and Web of Knowledge will not pick it up and they won't show it. It means there could be lost opportunities. Somebody asks someone else to speak at the conference instead of you because he had the same name. It means that there are lower measures of, of esteem that uh, when people do peer review, they look through the, the literature and try to gather the, all of the uh, achievements of this one person, and they miss achievements, or they, they find achievements attributed wrongly to some other person. 
And so that's the, the person, but of course it, there's a knock-on effect to his institution. Uh, it, because the institution is judged by the, the people that it employs, uh, the, the authors that work for it, that it, me it also means that for the institution there could be lower rankings, that there could be loss of peer review, there could be less funding from uh, funding agencies, and there could even be smaller standing in UNESCO country reports. So that, that's, the, that's the problem, and that's why we built this uh, authority control system in, in our institutional repository. This is uh, our institutional repository. It's called the Hong Kong Youth Scholars Hub. It doesn't do just publications. It does also <laughs> projects, grants, uh, uh, theses, uh, in inventions, uh, etc. Um, and this is an example of um, a research. We call them researcher page. It's an author profile. It gives you the um, it gives you the the full name in Roman, the, the complete name in in Chinese. Uh, the, the preferred form of academic publishing, the short abbreviated form, and down below there's also something called also cited as, where we have found these names where he appears under these names also and we know that it, they belong to him. Uh, okay, so it brings all this together and then once you find this guy, then you can look on the left side and see all of the, the research activities that he has done, such as his, his publications, his grants, his projects, inventions, etc. And that's where I'll stop. All right, super. Thank you, David. Okay, Matthias. Do you want? Do you know how to? Greetings. Um, there will be some redundancy in the slides. Um, that's not an issue because these are important things that have been mentioned and they should be mentioned many times over um, about the, the uh, advantages of having um, an authority file and not just if you um, want to edit Wikipedia but also if you want to um, work with Wikidata in the, in the outside world. Um, and of course in both directions, keeping people um, uh, separately. Um, here's the, the funniest thing, thing I, I stumbled across uh, when talking to librarians and, and researchers. Um, as part of the um, grant infrastructure in, in Germany, some of the institutions working with um, people, historical figure, figures, um, they were all asked to include um, li library uh, authority file records in their uh, data and, and they, they complied so. So they had um, uh, bibliographies, biographies, some kind of any kind of um, people related information and they asked, so what's next? They said, well, here's th um, much work has gone into uh, maintaining these records and, and what do we do with this uh, information? And the library network at this time didn't offer that much um, in 2010. So Wikipedia stepped in because uh, it sounded like fun. Um, and what we did was uh, we created um, a kind of a joke of a protocol because this is uh, a protocol that is as simple as possible in order to achieve a single goal. This is not the, um, the reinvention of the semantic web. This is not um, aiming to replace anything, it's just um, trying to achieve a simil simple goal in order to make one uh, thing happening. Uh, it allows you to broadcast um, a list of names and it allows you to tell other people how to build a URL that points to um, a record of a, of a certain person. You don't have to broadcast anything else because you already know who the person is um, because you already got a copy of the authority file. But the moment you want to say, well, um, I got this website and there is an article about Chris Patton, um, um, beacon comes into play. This is how a beacon, how, this is how the minimal beacon file uh, looks like. It is simply um, a, an information called target that says all your URLs have to look like this and um, the, the, the ID and bracket has to be replaced by the authority file information. In this case, it's a PND, now GND from, from the German National Library. So whenever you replace this information with um, the um, the, um, whenever you replace the ID tag with the um, um, specific number, you end up at a URL that points you to a resource. 
Uh, you don't have to be the person in control of the website you're pointing to, so it can be someone else. If, if, uh, if the, um, the church bibliographic um, encyclopedia does not offer a beacon file on its own, someone else can step in and offer a beacon file. And the resulting scenario is that you can aggregate all of these results. So for example, every time you have the Wikipedia article on Chris Patton, um, you can automatically generate a list of all the resources and just the resources that are offering um, information about Chris Patton. And this is um, a list of links with a perfect, perfect signal noise ratio because it only contains information about a specific person. It doesn't contain any information about um, someone else with a different name or the same name. It only contains the links. And in some cases, um, that's an optional parameter, um, it contains and information about the number of records. If, for example, you're a library and want to tell that um, you got six entries on Chris Patton in the say six books or six publications. Nothing else. This is a list of websites um, dealing with it. Um, um, Beacon is completely agnostic. You can use it for VF, you can use it for um, PND right now. Uh, it's usually used of, in connection with the German uh, network, but as you can, uh, as you know from the previous presentations, um, once you get a PND number or a GND number, you can always derive the, the VF number from it, and if there is any kind of other uh, authority file um, associated with this VF number, um, you get the, the rest of it, too. Um, this is one single application. Um, we designed Beacon to be um, simple, as simple as possible. It, we designed it to be um, to be able to implement it, um, to be implemented in within 60 minutes on your website. Uh, we're now down to 15 minutes because there is someone else offering JavaScript um, um, applets, so you don't have to change much more than one line in your website to be able to link to anyone else, and there is zero maintenance um, to keep the, the information updated. So we achieved one single goal, and. Um, we're quite happy with the results and um, we're looking for more applications like this. Thank you. All right, super, thanks Matthias. And next up is Andrew, um, who's going to talk about some ideas for future work with authority, authority control and um, Wikimedia projects. Okay, so very quickly, because we are time is pressing on, I want to talk about what we can do with all this data we've aggregated, we've built together, and use it for the benefit of the outside world. So we've pulled all this material together on Wikipedia. We've now been in the process of moving into Wikidata, and if any of you have a laptop open, you can look at the Wikidata properties list, and I think we now support about 12, 15, something like that, different authority types. All sorts of materials in there now. We're supporting an awful lot of systems, we're migrating all this data in. And Wikidata is available for use outside of Wikimedia projects. We want to expose it, we want to make it available, and what can we do with that data? So this is three possible case studies. They are not tools that exist, they are tools that maybe someone will build. So the first case, someone has an identifier. They have uh, an authority code, you know, 15 digits and some letters. It's not really very helpful. They want to know who they are. They can take this, for example, in ISNI, which is 16 digits mushed together. They can query that to Wikidata. Wikidata will give them back an answer. It will say, this is the person we think this belongs to. Here's some biographical contextual information about them. Here's where they were born, where they were died. Here's what we know their occupation was. Here's, you know, a picture of them. And here's what else they might be called. So does this look like the person you think you've got? In the second case, you might have a library catalog that you want to actually give some contextual information. You've, got, you've used a library catalog, you've looked up a book, you're faced with this information, you're trying to figure out any more information. So the system could take the Library of Congress code, for example, and say, okay, the system's running in German, let's say that German is our preferred language. Um, query Wikidata and say we have this code, we have this language, what can you give us? And it can then spit back, match that to a Wikidata entity, match the Wikidata entity to a language, match that language to a Wikipedia article, bring back the first paragraph of the Wikipedia article, pop that up for the reader and say, okay, you're looking at this, you're looking at this 
catalog entry, it's a book by so-and-so, here's some details about so-and-so. Bring that up within the, the catalog environment. So potentially we can use this to help bring the existing Wikipedia content to new audiences using these codes as an interface. Or thirdly, we could use Wikidata to try and bring these codes to people. If you're writing a system that relies on using these codes, then you want to be able to have some way of looking them up. You want to be able, preferably, to look them up without going to 15 different systems. Because we're aggregating all of this information to Wiki, into Wikidata, you can feed it with a name, you can feed it with some information, and ask for a code. And it will give you some possible examples. It can give you more details on what the information attached to those possible examples is and give you some sense of this is probably the person I want, this probably isn't the person I want. And from there, it can be embedded into the system and you can go on and develop other things. So these are all, as I said, very much hypothetical examples. I have not written any of these tools. Please don't ask me for them. But these are the sort of things that hopefully, over the next few years, people will be able to build with this linked data that we've built inside Wikidata using the authority controls. So. That's me, we shall have our, our panel. <coughs> Super, thanks. Um, thank you, Andrew. Those are all pretty exciting ideas. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll just, yes, we'll just leave that up. Um, I'm wondering if there are any questions from the audience at this point? Are there any questions? I have a question for the panel. Oh, oh you haven't, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think there's a mic going around Is somewhere. Um, speak up and I'll repeat the question. Yeah. Print the list of humans and count the list. Oh. Well, the so question that question was, why have you estimated the number of people in Wikidata? Why can't you just count? I don't think that there isn't. Um, there are several properties that I think would infer that a person is a human, like if that person has sex or not. Uh, is, there, uh, well, is, is there a person? Oh, there, there, is, there is, in fact, a G and D type for person. But the thing is, that would mean that that, that, per, that there are certain properties that you can infer are, are people. For instance, there's one that, which is called the GNT type person, which means the German National Library thinks they're a person, but that, but that means it's been imported from a large wiki. And that doesn't mean that somebody who, who like I took, um, an item from a smaller wiki is about a person, but may not necessarily be tagged with any w semantic data that I could infer they're a person. So I took estimates about what, um, what percentage of wikis are normally pe people on normal wikis and then multiplied it by the number of wikis out there. So it's, you have to infer it by semantic data, and there isn't always, I know, was trying to avoid bias in the fact that smaller wikis don't have semantic data about their people yet. And the second question is you're talking about libraries and librarians. Uh, I'm involved in a project uh, about music and musicians. Do you also record uh, musicians and artists in this uh, authority control files? Yes, I mean, typically VF is about authors, and that's normally about book, if you're the subject of a book, if you've written a book. But now there's also, we're also supporting, you saw one other ID, which is called ISNI, which starts to support artists. And I don't know too much about ISNI, but somebody else wants to speak in here? Um, ISNI was, uh, ISNI is hoping to be for people what ISBN is for books. It's one of the grand international standards. It's taken a very long time to get off the ground. And at the moment, that's being built by pulling together data from library files, but also from the various performing rights databases, so the people who do music licensing and so on. So it is going to be very, very good for musicians and any other form of performing artist. I think the hope is that in future, we'll be able to start pulling in things like scholarly citation databases, all the big systems that we have people recorded in. So for the moment, it's authors and musicians, but it will be others as well. Thanks, because this will help our work a lot. And just to answer your first question about GND type person, um, one problem is that a lot of people who aren't people have GND type person set. I've just checked, and the entry for Zeus says, is a person. 
and I'm fairly too. sure you wouldn't want to count Zeus under your list of people. So Zeus, Zeus also has many children in Wikidata. <laughs> Ares, Aphrodite, Apollo, etc. They're all listed as children, um, and a mother. Does he um, have a? Does he have a G&D identifier, and a cohabitant, who is Hera. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of articles in many languages. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Are there any, are there other questions from the audience? Yeah, SJ. Are there any scripts that run down the expected family tree and look for orphaned clusters? You'd think that one nice way to double check whether your people are people is whether they fit into a global genealogy. The problem is, of course, you get the mythical chains of descent that end up with kings and start with Zeus, so. Right. Um, right, right. Uh, yes, over here. Okay, uh, first uh, an answer to, uh, to the Wikipedia, I, I guess, that asked about musicians. Actually, Wikidata supports also other uh, properties about other databases that are mostly mm -hmm. about music. So uh, mm, there is no, of course, they are not the Library of Congress, but they are very important in their field. And, well, it's not just a question, possibly. Uh, um, I'm Sanita, uh, probably you, you remember me because I am, I am the one who's taking care of the, of the Italian uh, uh, sets of libraries. And uh, you know, we know that we have, uh, Max already knows it, because I pointed it out, uh, we have a problem uh, in, in, in DIAF because the, the National Library System of Italy has a different uh, uh, way of, um, of, of describing the, the items. So there is uh, a little matching between uh, the VIAF records, uh, sorry, the, uh, the SBN records and the VIAF records, the class red ones. So, um, okay. So we are just, sorry. So we were just uh, thinking about, um, you know, having a discussion also uh, after the panel if we can, about how to solve this problem, possibly not in a, in a manual way, so, because it's, a, it's really, uh, and, and also it would be very important also from your side uh, to take, you know, to, to take some contacts with, uh, with the SBN in Italy. Uh, we are currently uh, discussing with them about releasing the data. So if, mm, just if, if we can just have a meeting after that, that more than a question, it's just a request. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, I know that it's difficult to match some, and I know Italian records are difficult to match into the other databases. And I'd ask David actually, um, if Chinese seems like it's more difficult to match as well. And also because there are no sort of preferred names when you have people that have both Romanized, there's no, it, when Romanized and Chinese names are equally preferred. I don't know if you, have you got any experience with matching your uh, your authority file to other authority files? Well, we try to match to Scopus um, because they they are a large publication database and we can download publication met metadata from them. Um, but Scopus does not include the the Hansa Chinese text, so we could only match on Roman, and it was it was simply. Horrendous. It, it, the only way it could be done was, is manually. Uh, there was no way that a machine algorithm could could, could do that. I'm so, David. I'm so interested in those authority files, though, because the work that you're doing with Chinese. Um, you know, I've worked with I've worked with information about Chinese researchers in the databases you mentioned, Web of Science and Scopus. Those are tools that researchers use all around the world of, for looking up papers, um, and especially scientific papers. And it's very, very difficult to find the correct author when you don't know um, what you're already looking for, right? When you just know that you're looking for an author of a paper that is about physics. Um, and there's 50 people with the same name and they're all papers about physics. This is a problem that I face every single day as a librarian. And um, it's a really hard problem. Um, and I'm interested in how those international files, I guess I'm interested in how we can use them to improve the, um, 
Wikimedia projects or link them up with the Wikimedia projects, which oh so often are, you know, very, have a hard time. Yeah. Well, there's uh, a new initiative called ORCID uh, right. for the academic, and well, it, it's for, for any person. I mean, it could be, could be inventors, uh, investigators of, of grants and projects, uh, et cetera, but especially for, for authors. Right. And um, this, it, when, when it uh, is, is uh, a going concern, uh, Scopus will link to it, Crossref will, will feed into it. Right. Uh, as ORCID will be a subset, I understand, of, of ISNI numbers. Um, and there's, there's great hope now for, for this ORCID project. Right. But the, the, the uh, disambiguation of Scopus, it, it, for us, our Chinese authors, it had to be done manually. Right. And we did do it. And so we, we have sent, uh, for the last three years, we have sent uh, you know, file after file to Elsevier asking them to, to clean up the, this data um, in Scopus. Right. ORCID is spelled O-R-C-I-D, by the way, and it's um, anyone can sign up for an ORCID ID. I have an ORCID ID, um, and it is a linking service to try and link your publications and websites and other work and give you a unique identifier as a person. <coughs> is there a question? Uh, yes. 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 Um, I have a question about what Max said before about the mismatches between BF and Wikipedia, uh, which apparently are quite high, 15% uh, more or less. Um, are there any kind of arbitration protocols to know which information is right or um, how can we inform about errors or some kind of mechanism? So, so at first I was just, people were noticing the errors and then they were saying, um, they were like posting them on a sub page of, of, the, of the bot that I wrote. But I think that this is gonna be the killer feature of Wikidata is that now when someone sees the wrong error, they will correct it, I'll be able to see the revision and then that, then we can synchronize the databases to have the updated one because it's it's likely that if somebody if somebody changes the the uh, ID in Wikidata that they're changing it to the correct one. So um, so I think that the best way to do it is is going to be using the crowdsourcing um, built into Wikidata. Yes, I um, want to point out one problem that has been mm. popping up apparently when. Uh, linking different catalogs and collecting more information about authors. The authors, the authors don't necessarily like this. Um, it makes it possible to find very old publications by people which they don't really want to be associated with anymore. Um, and it, it's actually, I think, questionable whether, at least under the very strict uh, German privacy laws, this is even legal. I, I don't want to speak for German privacy laws, but European ones are fairly similar and work from the UK perspective, I find, it, I find it very difficult to imagine that if you publish something with your name on it, that saying you published that is problematic. I want to speak for the German perspective and um, it's hard to believe that it's problematic if you publish something under your name. If you publish something under a pseudonym, mm. um, most libraries um, do not link your pseudonym to your name until there is um, a sufficient confirmation that you're dead. So after, after you died, um, many libraries are going to, to, to lift the, the pseudonym, um, the missing link, um, if, they, if they hear about both information. But, um, but usually, um, if you publish something under your name, um, one of the expected um, consequences that someone will um, make a database out of the publication. Uh, I'll just say I was just talking about this very issue with a friend of mine um, who had changed their name and uh, people who change their names are a tricky case because sometimes people want to have their names, their old names associated with their new names and sometimes they're changing their name because they don't want their old names associated with their new names. Um, and I don't think libraries have found a good way to deal with that issue because we still use the name as the primary indicator of who someone is. So there's there's quite an interesting example of this. If you look in the Library of Congress authority records for Jan Morris, where you can actually see a discussion that's taken place between 
Morris, Morris's agent, and the Library of Congress as to whether these are separate people and how they should be associated and so on. Right. Denny? Um, would it be a recommendation for the Wikidata community what to do with synonyms and with name changes? Mm. I can ask. I think it's a hard problem that no one has figured out. So if we can tackle it, um, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. I'm aware that, um, for example, for a couple of years, um, there have been a few, a very few cases where um, there had been uh, authority file entries for um, one or two decades, and the respective author didn't. Um, object to it and then someone um, put it into the Wikipedia article and um, the person saw this and, and, um, and, and went ballistic against the National Library. Um, it's, <coughs> it's something that has to be negotiated. With. Um, some libraries tend to, uh, to, to cave in and to, um, to remove information um, out of uh, courtesy rather than legal obligation. Um, and um, it could be a valid um, decision for Wikimedia um, to, to extend such a courtesy as well, or they could just follow um, the existing applicable law um, uh, word by word and, and fight um, to keep this information online. Um, both um, strategies are um, possible and anything in between. And uh, I'd like to f file a feature request that I just thought of. And <laughs> something that um, I didn't get to show, but it was the results of a bot that I just finished running that was importing the alternative aliases, the pseudonyms, the AKAs, from VF into Wikidata, like you saw there was a Japanese AKA. And so in this case, the bot would have looked to see if there was a Japanese label, and if that was the same, and if it, was, if it wasn't the same, it would add it as an, if it would add it as an alias. Um, but then uh, somebody was pointing out that um, if there was like an English one for like say uh, Charles Babbage is really Char um, Dodge uh, Lewis Carroll is really Char Dodgson Charles Dodgson mm -hmm. sorry Charles Dodgson, yes yeah. um, that that would be that that would be true in the English alias but um, you may want to actually have that AKA shared amongst many other um, Latin speak or Latin script languages as well and so in this case I would have to go through and write so. It might be interesting, if the synonym does exist, this doesn't help with the synonym problem, but if one is accepted to uh, distribute it amongst many other uh, items, that might be interesting. Yeah. I think there's an interesting case there of distinguishing between, alter as Max says, distinguishing between alternative names which exist in essentially all languages versus different local names of a, a thing. Um, I think there was a discussion on the Wikidata mailing list about this a week or so ago, whether pseudonyms are a separate entity or not. Talking about musicians, maybe? I can't remember. Okay, we just have a few minutes, and I'd like to take these last three or four minutes to um, ask the panelists if any of the panelists have um, big ideas for projects that uh, might we might be able to do with authority data and Wikimedia at some point in the future. Like, what are your dreams for linked data, right? Um, uh, which is a pretty nerdy question, but what are your, what are you, so for instance, I'm imagining a world where when you pull up a library catalog entry, you also get photos from commons and you also get a link to the Wikipedia entry because we have linked all those things with VIAF identifiers or ISS and identifiers. Um, are there any, any projects that you've thought of that are kind of like that? I, I'm sorry. Was this for the panel? For the yeah, yeah, for the panel. Um, yeah. While we're passing the microphone around, I'd love to see that done with subject headings. So we've done it for people. People are pretty much a solved, you know, a more or less solved problem now. Touch wood. But I'd love to see this done for subject headings. Everyone in the world seems to use Library of Congress subject headings or similar variants or a local variant. You know, there's a few standard sets of headings, these dashed things. Can we translate those to, wiki, to Wikidata entities so that you can go from a heading to an article? That would be marvelous. Um, with regards to applications, um, obviously I would like to see um, more third-party databases being opened up, um, at least with regards to, to um, the ability to store and to 
to extract uh, authority file information and to be able to link to um, their results um, or to the individual items, the one that um, Phoebe mentioned, and of course to see if this is possible in a, um, a geo information sense too. So whenever you look for a specific person, you might also see um, items, not just uh, on the very topic, but also um, if uh, anything associated with that person is uh, nearby, such as items in, in local libraries in your neighborhood, for example, and you would require this information as well. David or Max, very quickly, anything to add? Um, the subject heading one was, was interesting uh, because there's always been a problem of, of getting a complete list of LC subject headings in other languages, so we, we still don't have one in Chinese. And so it, when we're cataloging um, Chinese books in the library, we use English subject headings. We don't translate them because we, there is no author, uh, mm -hmm. uh, authorized translation of them. So that might be a great um, effort at crowdsourcing. Wikidata has crowdsourced transfer, uh, crowdsource translation. Yeah. I'm going to give up mine to hear more from the audience. Um, I see Mikru was. Yeah. Uh, well, I would like to see as well that, uh, for instance, the digital books that we have at Wikisource and uh, all the transcriptions that are also spread around the world and uh, other libraries can access our catalog. and. Uh, every reader can uh, have, have access to the, those books that we have at uh, w uh, Wikimedia. Okay, cool. Um, SJ and then, or Denny I think was first. Denny and SJ and I think we'll cut it off with those, those two questions. Or, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't see you. Three questions, keep it fast, and then we'll, then we'll end. Or three comments. Three comments, yeah. <laughs> Here's the microphone. Yes. All right. Uh, just quickly, I've seen that there are some data, there are some interesting data sets floating around with millions of records, and every now and then there's a discussion on Wikidata that says, oh, that seems like interesting data, but it would totally overwhelm our namespace. Do we need a data wiki to complement Wikidata? <laughs> <laughs> Denny shrugged. <coughs> All right, yes, please. Uh, the authority files and the Wikidata really helps to know which works are in the public domain ah, and can be yes. freely used. Mm. Yes. Wikidata I've copyright status. I've heard that's going to yes. be very useful from yes. different people. Yeah. That's why I'm asking for the music because we need this disambiguous people information to search the current state of copyright. Rights determination is going to really benefit from this. I agree. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to point out for the subject headings, we actually do have for a lot of subjects already things like BNCF thesaurus identifier or uh, GND identifiers and so on. So we could actually probably just try to use them to figure out how many Chinese labels we have for the subject settings of um, LNCN topics and some uh, similar things. Just um, It's not an authority translation, obviously, but uh, a crowdsourced one. But I would be surprised if there would be uh, not already a substantial amount um, of those inside of Wikidata. And regarding the data wiki, I actually think I agree with SJ that something like this could be useful, but that's not a topic, I guess. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, but thank you so much to the panel. Um, if you are interested in this topic, I encourage you to stick around because Andrew Gray is actually going to continue talking about uh, tools for libraries and librarians. But um, for right now, thank you so much to our four panelists. Um, I hope you'll stay in the room if you've got questions. Thanks. And we will continue on this topic. And uh, a related yes. topic. There's a related involved. topic. There are libraries. There are libraries. Um, while Andrew gets set up with his computer, I have a couple of announcements to make, which are that. Um, <laughs> There's a bus to the dorms that is leaving at 6 p.m. Um, and six sharp, they say. So we are going to try and end on time. We're going to end at, uh, when are we ending? We're going to end at 5.30 here. Uh, that's my first announcement. And my second announcement is um, they're not advertising the Wi-Fi password widely. <laughs> I, it looks like many of you have figured it out. If you need it, it's wiki 2013 HK. Um, pretty simple. And that's for the Wikimania network. All lowercase, lower yeah, right. 
Um, and I'm not sure where the shuttles are leaving from, but if you ask upstairs, they'll know at the registration desk. Are there any other announcements, anything anyone wants to uh, say or mention before we, while we uh, get set up here? That's testing. And just one short note, it, and even though um, the shuttle bus to the dorm is gonna be departing at 6 p.m., we actually have to have this place closed down at 5.30, so we cannot really overrun and, yeah, so just keep this in mind. All right, so if you want to mingle and ask questions of the presenters, we can do it up in the lobby by the registration desk. They're gonna kick us out of this exact room. Yes, we're live, okay.